Hello everyone, welcome to the final book of Korra. Now, yeah, this is actually kind of crazy. Uh, I actually had a very difficult time finding a least favorite episode in this. I was going to go with this video without saying a single least favorite episode because every episode is actually kind of important. Uh, well, except maybe the clip show one, but I'm going to talk about that uh, in a bit. So, yeah, the finale. And yeah, things get kind of nuts, especially like the ending of it. Which I'm probably going to put in the thumbnail. But uh, I'm going to talk about the finale last. Because um, even though uh, there's nothing to talk about, about nothing, nothing really to talk about the ending. But um, there's one specific thing I want to talk about. So anyway, let's get to the, the various categories. So, my favorite episode. Okay, so it, it, this is less of a favorite episode and more of a favorite story arc. Because three episodes in particular... Uh, comprised of a story arc that's actually like the best of the series. That is episode two, Core Alone. Episode three, The Coronation. Episode four, The Calling. Uh, and so basically, it starts with episode two, which is part of what most a lot of people say that is the best episode of Korra. I don't blame them because like, um, yeah, it, show, it shows Korra actually. Um, how, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, under so much PTSD and that and it's um, you know trying to humble herself because like it's like after all the nonsense and all the stress that she's been through for the last three books, um, so she needs a lot of like, a huge breather, but um, and she wants to get go go through those breather by herself, but like she has a lot of problems because she can't really do much, uh, to trying to deal with her stress, deal with her PTSD. And, yeah, it's, I don't know why, this is, this is the start of why Korra is my waifu kind of thing. So, yeah, if I had a character who was like, would be a waifu, it's definitely Korra. But definitely, specifically of season 4 Korra, because that's when she becomes like, um, uh, I wouldn't say a fully realized avatar, but like, a definitely, definitely fully realized character. So, um, and, and plus, plus like, like, I generally like girls with long hair, but, like, with some exceptions, I really like athletic girls with short hair. And, like, Korra with short hair just looks way better than, than, than Korra with her ponytail, like, if you ask me. But, yeah, all, all three episodes, they all end up great. Uh, especially when we see a, cer a certain old favorite come back in. Um, the, there's a clip show in episode 8... Um, however, I was going to put this in my least favorite episode, but the problem is that it's kind of like, uh, I want to say it's kind of like, t um, not to say, it's kind of like the Ember Island players, uh, in which kind of like, um, a subversion to the clip show uh, archetype, where in that one, it is, um, it shows as a play, and the characters are actually reacted to themselves, essentially. In this case... It is other characters that are just jumping in, uh, uh, you know, they're just ju jumping in to kind of interrupt the uh, the clip show, um, which is kind of like it's kind of like having a reaction to the clip show as the clip show is going. So, and then and then there's Varric's part, which is kind of kind of hilarious. So here's the thing: even though the the, the one this is the only episode that's very unimportant. More or less unimportant to the whole sto whole story. If I like more than two thirds of it, then I can't really put it as my least favorite episode. That being said, we went to the least favorite episode. Uh, it's pretty hard to find one because every episode, except for like that um, what I just mentioned, is important to the story at, for some reason. That being said, episode nine, Beyond the Wilds, is just freaking weird. It just is just weird. The circumstances of the how like um, the uh, the tour the tourists get stuck, uh, and eventually Janora gets stuck. It's just so weird. Like this is this is an episode of Ben Ten, not an episode of of uh, Avatar. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm saying because it is an episode of Ben Ten in there. It's like I, I'm pretty sure this is a, a common story trope to have like weird pods, like and that store people in for whatever reason. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's. A very um, common enough like trope to be used, so so weird. And here's the thing, right? 
um, Zaheer was in the episode, and he was, like, helping out. Because, um, after Korra's telling him about Kuvira, and, uh, how it's more or less his fault that Kuvira stepped in and become worse than him, he, he's, like, Zaheer's got, like, a, oh, whoops, <laughs> my bad, kind of thing. He started helping out Korra. Dude, it would have been sick. It would have been awesome if, like, Zaheer ended up in the final episode helping the others. Like, if, um, we can get some random nobodies in the episode, in the final episode, why can't we have, like, Zaheer freed? Like, heck, if, if, like, Hiroshi got freed from prison, you know, just to help out, why can't we have Zaheer help out? You know, this, you do it, just going along with the, um, the Air Nation guys and just start, you know, helping out, you know, blowing wind and stuff at the, at the mech. Um, I feel like that, that could have been a really cool, like, you know, book into that character. I mean, I mean, the character already bookended pretty well, but I'm just saying it could have been a continuation and kind of like, um, more or less the path of redemption kind of thing. They could, they could have redeemed it here. They could have done that, but they chose not to. Uh, favorite character. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Toph is freaking awesome. I mean, Toph's always been freaking awesome. And I, I did include Toph and my favorite characters in Avatar because she's the main character. But in here, I can put it as as a favorite, ca a favorite character uh, of this book because holy crud, she is hilarious. Like, now she's hilarious and like she is like, she's basically the same, you know, Toph from, from, from Avatar, except she's old. That's the only real difference. Like, the rest is like exactly the same. Like, she's blunt, uh, she's to the point. Uh, she has both like, the same abilities, so not much different. You know, you know she like doesn't actually help out in the finale because she knows that like, she's done. Like she's kind of like she's done with it. Like let let the kids handle it, which makes sense. I mean, I get it. Top doesn't need to do everything. Like you know, doesn't doesn't need to needlessly die for nothing. I mean, she's she's good. And even though um, it was like the only time in the series where uh, Zuko's daughter Izumi appears but dang like it's kind of kind of interesting to see like how um, how Zuko raised her it's like cause so you know what Zuko and the Fire Nation family and how they're they're kind of awful but like you see Izumi in there she's being like this right I don't want to say righteous leader but like she's like um like because the character knows what she's doing and so like she's wanting to make everything peaceful uh, so like she doesn't say much, but like she's like uh, the product of Zuko being, you know, an actual good parent, uh, which is weird considering the others aren't exactly the best parents at all, uh, ever at all much. Okay, and I think out of the way, Kavira, come on. I mean, the th the thing about Kavira compared to the others is like you can actually see her develop as like a dictator. Oh, not mostly, just like, like, you see, like, the steps she took to become a dictator. So, like, unlike where the others were, like, Amon, like, you get the backstory of it, like, later, but, like, you already know more what he is beforehand. With Unalak, same thing. Well, not even, not even the same thing as Unalak, you just, you just know his, his presence is there. With Zaheer, like, you get kind of an idea based on other, char what other characters saying, but for Kimira, you have to actually see stuff. Like, you actually see her, like, uh, how she oppresses people, like, how good her, her her metal bending skills are. You can see, like, how, how, how good she is in, in a fight against um, Korra. Like, you know she's good. So, and you get to see her, like, with a lot of steps along the way to her being a dictator and being the character that she is at the end. So, she's a good character. She is a good character. I'm going to give her that. Plus she, plus she's hot. So, I mean, Batar Junior knows, what, knows, knows. He has his. He pick. Batar Junior picks his good wives. Okay, even if, even if she's like evil dictators. Really sucks that Kuvira chose the Empire over Batar. It sucks. I know. But, thank Batar Junior. Like, I want to put you as a favorite character too. Um, because you smart, you loyal. Um, you really want your waifu. And I don't blame him. <laughs> so anyway, my least favorite character, even though this, so, um, I had trouble finding my least favorite character, because there aren't that many new characters in it. So instead, I'm going to 
uh, to the character that was briefly shown in the previous book, but hasn't really had a speaking role or much of anything. Um, didn't really contribute mu too much before uh, the book. And I'm going to choose Batar Sr., mostly because, like, he's kind of a coward. I I'm going to understand if he's, like, not a bender at all. He's just kind of smart for the sake of being smart. But, like, he is just does freaking nothing. Like, he doesn't even contribute to the plot, uh, like, all that much. I mean, the most he contributes to the plot is just standing there. Like, dude, I, I get it. But, you know, do stuff, please. Like, much of the Batar, like, senior was in, like, the room where, you know, Varric and crew were, were just rebuilding the, the hummingbirds. He could have just helped out. But no, because he had no, because, like, uh, you know, he went with Toph to go home or something. No offense, Batar senior, but you're kind of not a good character. He's kind of there. My favorite... Oh, wait, 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 Paul. Before I get to these favorite characters, my, my favorite and these favorite moments. I don't know. Actually, hmm. Nah, not through that. I'm, I'm going get to get to my these favorite moments or my other moments. Okay. My favorite moments... Surprisingly, there aren't a lot compared to the other books. But this is, um... There's some really good... A bit small stuff. There's a lot of small stuff. Like, the whole book is great. But a lot of small... Like, more or less insignificant... Uh, pieces of it that were just better than, than the rest. So, in the first episode, like, Milo shows up him being a man. Like, Milo the man. He's not Milo the boy, it's Milo the man. Like, Milo freaking, like, destroys like, this book. Because, like, again, I mentioned this before, like, the whole Tenzin, you know, teaching Milo how to, like, be a, com like, must be a, com uh, how to raise a pet or so trying to be a commander. You get to see Milo being from, like, this kid to the kind of character you just want to take charge, be a commander, trying to be, like, you know, trying to be a harsh dictator if, like, you know, there's going to be a new book several, like, from several years into the future, several decades in the future. I'm just saying that could have been a plot point. Milo could be a villain. I'm just saying he could be. Doesn't mean he has to. Could Episode two, where um, you know the airbending kids, um, they they eventually go, go to oh no 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 that's not the airbending kids, it's um Cora herself. We'll get it's I'll get to that a bit later, but um, Cora and um first goes into this weird harbor. She meets up with a guy, and he knows that she's the Avatar, and then. This dude, so the, hey, how about I uh, take a picture of you to put in my wall of avatars? Look at this freaking photo! Look at this old reference! That is a reference! I don't know if like, my, my, you can see the finger there, but that is a reference! Remember, like, the beginning of Avatar? Like, uh, when they go to Kyoshi Island, um, Aang uh, wants to do this, hey, hey, look at this thing I can do! I can, you know, well, what, what's it, no, so let's not pull the Kyoshi Island, one of the two. I know, I know, I think it hasn't done Kyoshi Island, so. He does this little, put his little thing, and he twists around his weird face. Like, he does this little, little thing, and he twists around, and he makes his goofy face, and freaking, <laughs> angle the same thing in this, in this freaking image. It's hilarious. It shows like Aang, like, even though, yes, he is like, he, he was, like, he ended up being an adult. He still hasn't lost his childish, you know, uh, tendencies. Like, he, has, he hasn't lost his childish charm, I guess, so to say. Like, he's still doing goofy things as an adult, and I, I just feel like that's hilarious. Dang, Angus, cool. <laughs> um, episode uh, 6, uh, the paintings, where, um, what's-his-name was, um, uh, what's his name with the green hair, the, the, the dyed the green hair guy? He was looking at the painting, the painting that Iki and Mila are doing, and like Iki was like this crude, like little girl's painting, and he really likes it. Uh, so I was like, oh, it shows, it shows her it, 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 that this, um, it, this, cr this nearly crudely drawn, like painting shows like the inner Iki, right? And it goes to Milo, holy freaking crud! Uh, future, you can find like the, the Milo painting that he did, holy crud! Look at this thing! It is, um, yeah, it shows this really realistic, like, big commander, Milo, this is Milo in this huge cape, like some some kind of king, 
And then he, and then the dude is saying, "I know what you look on the outside, but what is what is like the inner Milo?" And Milo's like, and Milo's was was part of like, "What the heck is this guy talking about?" I didn't paint. And it's a funny thing is like he did mention in an earlier episode that he knows how to paint, uh, or he knows how to draw. Like there was a point uh, when um, when they're been kids going to the, uh, their, uh, before they go to the swamp, like. Um, you're trying to find Korra and Emilio, like me draws a uh, really good uh, portrait of Korra, and then Iki, oh, was it Iki or Janora saying, like, oh, that's really pretty good, how do you do that? And, and they say, oh, you don't know anything about me. Dang, Milo. Uh, also in the same episode where, um, where Vera just essentially, like, blows up, like, the train car, uh... You know, the spirit explosion, but Tara Jr.'s eyes, like, bulge, like, like they bulge like they're some sort of Pikmin character. It is absolutely creepy. I don't know if Future Me could put it in there. Now I'm asking Future Me to put it in there. Well, sorry, man. Anyway. Episode 9. Yes, even though, like, at least third episode, hey, man, at least Korra finally got her groove back. So, that's kind of the good thing, like... She was all stressed out the entire time, but at the end, you know what? I'm good. I'm ready to go. That is really, really nice. Not much more to say here. Episode 10. Just, just Episode 10, this, this very moment is just like, like, this one exchange. And I don't know why I like to repeat that for, uh, you know, go back a few seconds just to hear that thing over and over again. Um, so, uh, Lynn meets Toph for the first time in a long time. And Lin says, Hey, Chief. And then Toph says, Hey, Chief. <laughs> they, both, they both say, Hey, Chief. I don't know why it's funny. It's just funny. It's just funny. I really like that. It's, it's um, I don't know. I, I just find it funny. Okay, finally, episode 12, um, when uh, Pama and Wu, and Wu were, like, you know, uh, trying to take care of the crowd that's in the train station, um, uh, yeah, they're those kind of nonsense. I forget what the exchange was to Pema, but Pema, oh, so, so, so I someone to say to Pema to do something, and then Pema says, I raised me, though, I can handle anything. And then we all know about, um, how, you know, Milo was like, so imagine, like, trying to raise a kid like Milo. Dang, Pema. Pema can handle anything. <laughs> It's like, Pema doesn't really get a lot of love in this in the season, but, like, she's a really good character, okay? Even if, even if she doesn't really do what other than being a housewife, but, like, I mean, there's a lot of really good girls in Korra, okay? There's the main girl, there's, there's uh, Sami, Gwen's pretty good, um, Suyin, oh, I really love Opal, she's cute, Toph, of course. But, like, um, freaking Pema, though. Like, you don't get to see her, but, like, she's a sport. She's a champ, like in her own right. And also, when Wu comes with freaking pit of uh, uh, Prince Wu, holy crud! Like the the badger moles, like he just shows up with a bunch of badger moles, and he just like um, and he was like singing, the singing, and the badger moles was like just digging around, helping out. I don't know why, but like freaking Prince Wu, like I was considering putting him a least favorite character, because like he actually shows, only shows up in this season. But the thing is, like, it's kind of a red herring. Like, in the first few episodes, you see Wu as this, like, there's this royal pain in the butt. But, like, he mans up during the end. Like, he goes from a from a wimp, from a wimp or a spoiled wimp, to, like, a fully respected king on Quartz. Because he chose not, he doesn't want to be a king anymore. He decides, you know, let's screw it, like, screw the year, screw the monarchy. We're going to put, like, a, going to put, like, Democratic elections, just like you know the the Repu the Republic City. I don't know if that's going to be effective later on, but like imagine if that ends up being a problem later. That's probably going to be a problem later. Like if this could be a new new Avatar series, again, who knows when in the future? If, if like breaking up your kingdom was a big problem, but the, the boy was like a freaking man. Like he went from a whip to a man, so he's awesome. And whole singing, and they'll those singing like um, they were caught, they were uh, got caught by some like guys in suits, and then the badger bowls come back and they just wreck everything, and it's super cool. Woo, you're cool. 
I like freaking Batar. Anyway, my least for a moment, there's only one thing I need to me mention, and that is um, episode eight. Remember I mentioned like if I like two thirds of the episode, there's no I can't put it in my least favorite episode. Well, the one third that is missing actually ended up at least uh, the least favorite part because it's kind of boring. The thing is, the episode itself is not really that important. And if, if you're not going to make it funny, and if you're not going to subvert, like, the, the clip show tropes, then you're not going to be good. Because the thing is, um, Mako, when he's telling his, like, his clip show, like, Wu is there. Again, Hugh still in his, like, wimp phase. And then, um, freaking, what's his name? Two was there, and... and Mako's grandma was there. Um, Wu keeps interrupting the the clip show. He just keeps doing it over and over. And again, just prove. And again, Wu is in this case was kind of like needy audience because like we know how how bad Mako is with girls. Okay, he can't date Asami or Korra to save his life. But like, and Wu thing and Wu's part saying, "Dude, you suck. You you suck at dating." And even even like two is like saying like how 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 much a Mako sucks at dating, and to the point that I actually did a high five in like the interruption. That's actually hilarious. And like the cool thing is like while they're doing the interruptions, you see like a little uh, a circle like somewhere like in the corner like here with like, a chibi version of the characters, and like uh, actually adds to the hilarity factor. Meanwhile, the last part of last like flashback is Varric and Bolan because they, they were escape escaping from you know Kavira's army. They were on a boat with a bunch of random like random like, prisoners. Varric was like telling like the flat uh, his version of flashback, uh, but Bolin's flashback, like is a movie or mover in this case, and like trying to make it all like flashy and stuff. Yo, that's sick, and e even having like um. Like this fake story about like all four like of the four main villains up to that point, that being like Amon, Unala, Vatu, and, and Zahir, as the, as like there's some sort of like you know Legion of Doom of something together, with nobody liking Unalak, you just kind of there, and it just feels like super hilarious. I could call it a fair moment, but the thing is like this is a really large moment to be called a fair moment, so I wouldn't call it a fair moment because it's a huge section of a, of an episode. See, and that's hilarious, and that's absolutely good, because, oh, Derek is hilarious, of course, but, like, the way he exaggerates everything is absolutely hilarious, and even the, even the audience, or rather, like, the, um, the random prisoners, like, they, they were just clapping, because this is hilarious, good stuff, even Bolin was objecting to all of it, because saying, like, oh, this didn't, this, this, this didn't happen, what the heck, and then there's one guy that's saying, dude, chill, it's just a mover, you know, just, you know, line up. <laughs> Like, like the prisoners know it's not real, and the prisoners know that's exaggerated. But it's one heck of a ride, am I right? But no, Korra and Asami's flashback is just straight clip show. It's just kind of nothing. It's bo it's boring and unnecessary. Like they couldn't even make it funny. They couldn't make it interesting. Like, and they could have Tenzin in there, like, because he was he was there at the end of that flashback or at the end of that section, but he doesn't really contribute to anything. Man. Anyway, um, so um, before we end off Korra and end off the, this particular playlist, or at least I think this playlist will be ending, I don't know if it will continue on in the, in the future, but I want to talk about the finale for a bit. Um, so, for those who know about having the finale, uh, Asami wanted to get a vacation, and Korra said, hey, let's do that. And then Korra and Asami is saying, oh, let's go to, yeah, I, want, I don't have them in the I want to go to Spirit World. Let's go there, and so they go to the Republic City Spirit Portal. I just showed up um, when the Kavir's weapon, powered up by the entire like Spirit Wild Forest, absolutely blows up everything, creates a new Spirit Portal. So what happens is that uh, the two of them, Kor and Asami, they go to the Spirit Portal, and they hold hands, look at each other, and then there's the finale. No kissing, no nothing. I was legit, like when when this was airing, okay, when this was airing, or I don't know if the, I don't know if I saw it online or saw it was airing, because like, I think the episode was shown online. But when I first saw it, all those years back, I was like, wait a minute, 
did, did they really just and then and they did end up really just so because i i didn't see i didn't actually see the um the um i didn't see it coming i didn't see the unification coming like because uh you know because how Marco sucks at being a boyfriend uh what eventually happens is that um uh, the creators really wanted to push the we want to push the lesbian option, but however, thinking because Nickelodeon doesn't want the doesn't want you know LGBT representation. I don't know if they do now, but um, at the time they didn't. But um, they wanted to um, the creators really want to push that specifically, and they were building it up. For a while, they've been building it up, like not just in the book, but outside of that particular book, to um to try to get Cora and Asami together without without the census realizing it until it's already too late. Like and they didn't even like you know go that far. They it was actually kind of nuts. I didn't see the build up coming, but like once I was watching the book, knowing what's going to happen. I realized, wait a minute, oh, that makes sense now. Since Cora was writing letters to Asami for all these years without Mako Bolin knowing, and specifically telling her not to know, because Cora likes Asami more. And I'm like, I thought, oh, here I thought, because, oh, because I thought, like, Asami was, like, Cora's, like, best friend or something. But she trusts her more or something. But then I realized, wait a minute, if that was the case, shouldn't we write into, like, Tenzin or something? Because, like, he's, like, you know, spiritual master. Like the kind of guy who would need to know if he's okay, uh, but no, she does it with Sami and Sami alone. But yeah, the whole holding hands, looking to each other's eyes, like, I was legit surprised. I was like, wait, did he just like put like Cora and Sami as a couple? And then was it until a bit later? I, I had to I had to check. Like, is this really real? It, did this really happen? And then I looked it up. And I'm like, yes, that's actually real. It's actually canon that the two are together. And I'm like, oh my goodness. You guys, you guys really nailed it. <laughs> and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken, that this is actually the first, like, um, actual, like, same-sex couple in the, um, from a kid's show. I could be mistaken. I could be wrong. I say, I say kid's show because uh, Curry and Sakura, I don't know about that. I mean... I'm gonna watch that next, but like I'm not gonna put a video on that, but because so, that's on Netflix now, so I might as well rewatch it because I haven't watched that in like over two decades. Um, uh, not maybe not over two decades, but like no, yeah, yeah, over two decades. So, um, but like for American kids show, let's leave it at that. Uh, and I believe like because of Cora Asami, like other shows starting doing much the same thing and trying to. Uh, normalize the LGBT kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah, that threw me off. I liked it. I, I like I the fact that that threw me off. Like, the last possible second threw me off. So, good job on you. So, anyway, that is it for the opinions on the Avatar Last Airbender and my uh, opinions about Legend of Korra. Um, maybe I will make a new, maybe make a, make a top episode of my favorite characters on both series. Um, uh, I went after I won't do a thing on my favorite character, my favorite moments of both series, but I probably will do character both series, and now we'll include the, the main characters. So we'll see if, if you guys are interested in me making a favorite characters list for Avatar. Just comment below, okay? Okay. Probably remind myself put in the description too. So that is all. See you guys later for something else. <laughs>